Okay, everybody. Welcome back to Ranger Auto. We're underneath our 07 DTS. You're looking at the oil filter. Today, we're changing the gasket on the oil filter housing. And we're also going to change the uh, oil pressure sensor, which is attached to the side of the housing. So, we got it up on the ramps today. You can see them on the ramps. This here is to support the oil pan or the engine because so we got to take out the motor mount these two bolts right here this bolt right here on the frame we got to pull the motor mount and then after we get the motor mount pulled there's your sensor we're going to take the sensor out while it's still on the car now as far as whether or not we need to pull the oil filter before we take the housing off We'll find that out later on as we tear this down. So that's what we're at. That's what we're getting ready to do. So let me get this motor mount out of the way. I'll bring you back and show you what we got. Okay, we're on the top side of the engine. I've taken out the air box so I can access these two bolts right here. You've got to take out your radiator supports, which are on each end of the radiator. You've got a couple bolts right here that hold this front crash bracket in place. You've got two more bolts. They're 15 millimeter over here by your washer fluid reservoir. You've got to take this upper brace off. Then after we get the upper brace off, we're going to pull the cooling fans so that we can gain access to the motor mount from the top side of the engine. Now, if you look in here, I don't know if you can see it too well. We're going to move this hose out of the way. You see that big bracket down there? There's two bolts on that bracket. If you dare want to go after them, you can. However, I have a bad feeling that's not going to work for us today. So you can see the mount down there, way in the bottom. There's a bolt sticks out on top of it. We got to get the cooling fans out so we've got room to go after the top of that mount. After that, we got to pull our dog bone, which we have to anyway, because we're changing it. We got to pull our dog bone. And then hopefully we can get that mount out down there. And then we can finally go after our uh, adapter housing. So let me get this pulled off and uh, we'll be right back. All right, so I'll show you where we're at so far. Got to get this bracket loose. You can get at it through the grill. It's got two bolts down in there you can get to I don't know if you can see it too well but you can see the two bolt holes down in there gotta get that loose then you got a plastic guard right here which is attached to the top of the grill with these push pins pull the push pins pull that forward and let it rest then you got to pull this back you got to take your radiator supports off which we did that we got our crash bracket off which is this support right here in order to get that out, you got to pull the cooling fans, which we got the cooling fans out right there. That was a job. Got to take this clip loose. This clip right here goes in your radiator. Okay? Goes right down here in your radiator. Make sure it goes right back where it came from. Make sure that you get it in correctly because if you don't, your line won't seal. By the way, this line did not have an O-ring on it. So if yours doesn't have an O-ring on it, I'm assuming that's going to be correct. And you just want to push your clip back on, which I'll do here in a minute because it's apparently going to take two hands to do it. Anyway, takes that line off right there. Yours might have, on the cooling fan, it might have a couple uh, extra bolts on it. So if it does, those are 10 millimeter. Those come right out. This one didn't. This one's actually missing bolts. So I'm going to have to go over to like Ace or Home Depot and get some bolts for this radiator. He's also missing a couple for his uh, core support right here. So, okay, so we got that cleared out. We're still going after the motor mount. You've got a cooling fans right here. We can pull that back. You can probably see it better. That's our mount right there. We got to get that out of the way. These two bolts are going to come out and then that's going to allow this to come forward and then I'll jack the engine up. We don't have to worry about our dog bone on this car because it's broke so 
you know well yeah we do because we got that nut in the back so we're going to break that nut loose pull the dog bone off we got it supported on the jack we'll take these two bolts out that'll pull this mount back so that we can get to our housing so let me do some more carnage and we'll be right back all right we got our bolts out that hold this bracket right here this one right here they are 15 millimeter kind of dirty looking i just set those right up there on our cowl see our bolts are on our cowl up here our dog bone nuts right there dog bones loose but in order to get that out you got to pull the reservoir tank if you remember from our power steering pump video we had to pull the power steering tank not the power steering tank but the uh coolant tank to get that out we have to do it again so because we're replacing that because you know it's broken so we got all of our bolts out now we got to carefully jack our engine up so that we can get this bracket pulled back we can get our bracket away from the engine block we may be able to snake that mount past it of course you got this wiring in the way you just got to work around it if you're fortunate enough to have this thing still attached up on the bolt up on the spots you might be better off that way so let's see if we can jack our engine up now yeah we're jacking up our engine okay got to be careful when you're doing this all right so we see if we can pull our mount out now All right, let's see how much further we got to go underneath. So we can jack our engine up now, but problem is we're running out of jack. So we got to kind of see where we're at under here. See, there's our mount right there. All right, so it's sitting on them bolts right there. Let's see. We can pull that bracket off by pulling those two nuts which I had no idea about, so. I wonder how much of a pain in the neck that's gonna be. So we can almost get our mount out, but we're gonna have to uh, do some negotiating here, cause uh, we gotta jack our engine up a little higher so we can get these bolts clear. But as you can see, our jack's just about at the end of its travel, so I might have to lower it back down just a minute and put some more blocks on it but uh mount will come out as soon as we get this bracket off so let me get this bracket off and then uh, we'll take it from there well there's our front motor mount on the ground before it goes back in we're gonna have to take that nut loose separate it from that bracket because that bracket's got to go in first all right so you have to take this little bracket off right here. It's got a nut on one side and a stud on the other. All right, you might see where it goes on down there where the exhaust bolts up right down in there. Okay, there's another brace you gotta unbolt. It's attached to that long screw down there off the transmission. Yeah, that brace looks like that. Right there, that brace it goes on there. So you gotta take that loose because it sits in front of the bracket. And then you can get the bracket off. Then you gotta jack your engine up a little bit, maybe like one or two pumps higher than you had it. And then that mount comes right out. So we're at our main event, which is what we're here for. Our switch is right where my finger is pointing. We gotta disconnect the electrical connector. It's just your basic um, lift up and pull. We have to get that out of the housing. Then we got to get the housing off the engine. It's held in by three 12 millimeter bolts. We got to get our sending unit out. You got to do that from underneath. So I'll get that all tore apart. Then I'll bring you back and I'll show you what we're doing. All right, here's our housing. This is what it looks like when you see it on the car. So you flip it over on the back side. Yes, I know there's dirt. We're going to clean it off anyway, so it's not a big deal. 
All right, so this is where your gasket sits. It sits like, let's see, I think it sits this way. So it's a, it's a rubber impregnated metal gasket that you have. And you can see down on the bottom, right down in here where it's been leaking. So it looks like the seal failed. You can see it really good on the front side. This is the front side of the seal. Yeah, you can see real good where it's been leaking. So, and then I'll show you what it looks like under here after you get it all tore apart. By the way, it's easier to take the filter off. I don't know if you can see it really good up in here. There's your mounting surface for your filter housing right there. That empty bolt hole is where that brace goes back on. And then over here is your uh, air compressor for your AC system. So this is uh, our janky setup here for uh, how we do this. Make sure you have a drain pan nearby too because this thing is going to gush. So we need to clean this side up. We need to uh, make sure we don't have any deformities such as casting problems on the block that would cause that to leak because these bolts aren't really tight. I think they're like 12 or 13 foot pounds if you have to torque them. So find out what's going on there. We'll get this all cleaned up. We'll get the gasket back in. Um, here is our sending unit, our oil pressure sender that goes in this side right here. So we're changing it because it's also leaking right around that uh, crimp right there. It leaks past the crimp, starts dripping everywhere. Sometimes it'll leak through that hole right there because uh, this is your electrical connector on the back. So oil goes in there and reads the pressure and then it tells the computer oil pressure. It also indicates whether or not you get that light, that message that says oil pressure low, shut down engine. Yeah, that's what this does. This controls that. If you ever get that message and you've changed the uh, oil filter and it still doesn't make it go away, you got to take this out. This is a 24 millimeter deep, deep socket. I have a 24, or no, I'm sorry, 22 millimeter deep, deep socket. My socket's not deep enough. So go grab some parts and we'll start putting this back together. Okay, I've got some parts for you. This part's the uh, sender that we got to put in. This is your uh, gasket. See, so that's your gasket right there. You need a part number for that. Yes, that does say quantity five. It comes in a pack of five. But for ten bucks, you can't complain. So, what I'll do is I'll break that down and then charge them individually. Something like two dollars and fifty cents, something like that. This is your oil filter number only because my filter, the uh, O-ring got stuck to the housing. When that happens, the O-ring's garbage. You got to get another oil filter. So we got our mount off right there. We got to get our piece here ready to go back on the car. We got our car cleaned. You get to see that beautifulness here slide this down here so you can see a good look of it there see that we got that all nice and clean down there what we could I don't think it's gonna leak so and uh, let me show you how that bracket setup goes so you got a better idea of what we're what we're talking about by braces this is your strut mount brace okay this is your motor mount brace okay this this is what it looks like when you look at it from under the hood you got your motor mount that sits here. This brace is bolted to the side of the engine block. And this is your upper bolts to the engine block as well. So in relation to how that goes on the car, you've got your two upper bolts, one there and one there. Well, I'm sorry, no, I take that back. There's that one there and that one there, your two bolts that go on the top. Your mount goes through that hole right there. It's got an alignment pin on it. You gotta line that up for that. Then, I don't know if you can see it too well. Let me zoom in a little bit better so I can show you. Zoom back out here so you can look. All right. 
can't really get a good look at it for you. Let me uh, see if I can find a good section here. Anyway, you gotta, oh, there it is right there. You can kind of see it if we can get past that right there. Anyway, you'll see a stud. Okay, there's that hole right there, and then there's a stud next to it that that small L brace attaches. And when you put the L brace on, you're going to have another brace that goes on it before you can tighten it down. That's this little uh, fork brace here. It goes in, fork end goes up on there, up onto the engine, and then the bolt I've got sticking out of the transmission. This one down there, that's the other end of that brace. So we're all cleaned up under here. We've got to get our housing back on. And then I think the torque value is something like 18 to 20 foot pounds if you can get a torque wrench in there. Or just snug it real good. Usually does the job. And uh, let's start getting this back together. I went ahead and put our sending unit in for our oil pressure. When you tighten that up, you can go to the end of the threads here if you want to. The only thing that's got to be of importance is make sure the orientation of your end is facing the same way it was on the car. In my car, it was facing upward. So make sure you get that done. It's easier to do it off the car than to wait and do it on the car because uh, it's a bit of a pain. That's a one inch socket, but you got to get a nice and deep socket because otherwise you're not going to get it to go. Okay, and then we got to flip our unit around here, get our gasket installed like that. And then you'll have your three bolts to go through and get them each started a couple threads before you tighten them down. And then uh, we'll just start putting it back together. Just wanted to bring you back. It's getting dark here, so I don't know how much more I can record. But uh, we got our brace down in the way you have to do this you got to take that l brace off of course to get it out but then if you have the stud on it like i did it takes a uh, inverted torx bit i think i used an e8 e8 and a 15 millimeter ratcheting wrench you can get the nut off because that's how i did it then you put the stud back in the engine block. And then you feed this down through here. It's got an alignment tab on the mount down here that has to fit inside the frame. Once that drops, then you crawl underneath the car. You put your brace back on underneath. And then once you put your brace back on, you can put your nut on. And uh, you can access the nut through this uh, hole right here, this triangle. It goes straight down. So now we're getting ready to put the uh, other brace back on. So we got to grab our other nut, which I believe is this one right here. This is our other 15 millimeter nut. Let me show you about this brace real quick. Apologize for my light. It's a brand new light, so we're seeing how it works tonight. All right, this is your brace. It goes from your transmission to this bolt up here, okay? It goes right up over the top of the exhaust pipe and it bolts up to the other side. It's got a cutout in it because I'm gonna show you how this goes together. Take this bolt out, okay? Sit that bolt down on the ground. I think that was a 15 or a 13 millimeter. You take your brace and you're gonna feed it through like this. You got to kind of work around it here. But you got to feed it up high because your stud sits right up top there. And then once you got it locked on the stud, like I do, let's see if I can get this in here. Doing it this way, I don't know if you can see this or not. All right, let me see here. Take your bolt after you get it locked in place there. Let's see if I can get this thing to go in the hole. And there we go. You get your bolt in the hole. Tighten it down. And this brace 
it's kind of like an added brace or like a torque mount brace or something i'm not exactly sure what it's for but see you get your bolt in your bracket here there it goes all right now that we got that going let me show you how it fits on that little brace that we have to put it on it just fits in like that you see how see how that goes on top of that mount right there because now you're going to put your nut on the mount let me show you how this goes back together here all right you got to find your stud and your stud sits down over here i don't know if you can see my finger or not but your stud sits down in here so what you have to do is uh we're gonna set up our ratchet we're gonna take our um your nut on there like this and then since you can see the stud from above you take your socket and you're gonna send it down with your nut in it you gotta locate the stud again all right let's see we got our brace there's the stud i don't know if you can see my socket or not you see my ratchet how it's going in right there and you take your ratchet or your extension without the ratchet on it and you just spin the nut on there now you can get this nut off underneath the car i think that's where i was going with it having it underneath the car it's just easier to do it up top because it's a straight shot so now we're going to take our ratchet and we're going to put it on our extension make sure you don't hit your radiator when you do this I've already nicked this thing a couple times, but I'm pretty sure it'll be okay. And tighten that puppy down. You got to do this first because the next part is uh, going to get more involved. So make sure you tighten that down. 20 foot pounds if you can get a torque wrench in there. Otherwise, just get it tight enough where it doesn't come off the car. Let me see if I can adjust my hand here so I can get some good pulls on this thing. And see where my ratchet is down there? I don't know if you can see it or not. Yeah, you can kind of see it past that electrical wire there. Yeah, it's really hard to film this down there. But uh, let me get this finished up and then I'll show you what we do next. All right, once you got the nut on the stud right there, you need to attach the mount to the brace. So to do that, you get your nuts out like this, and you're gonna just kind of pick it up. It's easier to do with two hands, so. so I'm gonna pick the brace up, and you're gonna put the nuts on the brace. See if I can get you in a good view here, and I can show you how this goes together. All right, let me see if I can do this here. Push that up like that. Put the nuts on it, but don't tighten them down. I'll show you why here in a minute. You want to get your two nuts on. Let me pick the camera back up here so you can see what I'm doing. All right, you see I got that one nut on there to hold that up. Then you take your other nut and you put it on here like that. Don't tighten these up yet. Okay. All right, we got our nuts on. All right, now there's two 15 millimeter bolts that go in the top of the brace. We need to get our ratchet so we can put those in. Those you are gonna tighten up. All right, and I'll show you where those bolts go here. The reason that you're tightening those bolts up and not the bottom nuts is because when we lower this engine down, we gotta line that. We gotta have enough room for that thing to slide so it lines up. See where this bolt's going to go? I'll show you here in a minute. And of course, it's our train. Can't get a video done without a damn train. Which is funny because the train has not been here all day. And then for some reason, I decide to videotape. And we get a damn train. So you want to get your bolts in here. Yeah. 
All right, get that bolt started there. Let's see if we can get it to hold with our ratchet here. All right. Once you get that in a few threads, then you want to grab the bolt for the other side and get that one put in. That one goes in this hole down here. This has to be centered. Otherwise, you'll, you'll break your mount when you get ready to lower this back down onto the cradle. Or the frame, whatever you want to call it. So, we're going to zip those in. While you do that, this is going to move down here. So, if it starts to move outside of where it is, because right now it's not in alignment. So, what you want to do is, uh, at this point... Get that bolted in a little bit and then start lowering your engine down. Just keep an eye on that mount down on the bottom. Keep an eye on this up here. Make sure that nothing funny happens. Once the mount is all the way down on the frame, you can go ahead and tighten all your bolts up for the mount. Then we've got to come over here and get this dog bone done. So I'll get this down. I'll show you what it looks like and then we'll work on that dog bone. All right, we got our mount down touching the engine our mount in the bottom it went right into the hole so now we're going to get our zip gun set up and we're going to zip us in some bolts because that's just how we do things around here if you don't have one of these you really ought to get one personally though i am going to start trying out the dewalt stuff and if I say it weird like that, it's just because. All right. We're going to get our socket off the best ratchet in the world right here. Best money. Spent $25 for that socket or that ratchet, and it has been the greatest thing I have ever owned. I kid you not. Now, there's going to be a part where we're going to have to stop because he's missing some bolts. And I'm going to have to go get the bolts and everything. So it may be a couple of days before we pick this up. But anyway, moving on. That one in there. And come over here and get this one. All right. Then you want to get underneath, and you want to get those two underneath that we mounted up earlier. You can put your motor mount back together now if you want to. That's a 21 millimeter. You can see all your bolt holes line up now. So let's go ahead and get these two nuts tightened down right here you might need an extension for this depending on how much room you find yourself having yeah we're gonna have to put an extension on this one so let's go get us an extension let's go over here and get us an extension for this thing and then we can really bust it out Yeah, this was supposed to have been one of them easy one-day jobs, and it turned out to be two days. Because I overestimated the abilities of what had to be done here in order to get this done. So, that is my fault. I think the time for this is like 9, 10 hours or something like that. Some stupid number like that. By the way, when we get ready to put that front brace back down, you can access the bolt holes through the grill. And I'll show you that when we get ready to put that brace back in. Probably won't be in this video, probably be in part two, because we're gonna have a part two. So, part two is gonna be changing out the dog bone and finishing this up. So, and of course, we're going to put our filter back on and not He-Man tighten it down like we did before to where the seal got caught on it. So. Okay, those bolts are down. We'll come by later and torque them down with the, with the regular ratchet. We'll go there and make sure they're cinched up real good. But for right now, just to get it down... Get that out of the way so we can move on to the next thing. So, 
All right, now the next thing is going to be we got to put our that we can't go any further till we tighten those two top bolts down because the next thing we're going to do is uh, call this ended for right now because uh, this is the part where I got to go get hardware. So stay tuned for part two and we'll see you then.